Hey what's up guys, it's Graphic Phoenix, back with another video today, and today we're setting up the brand new dart frog tank that I have just customized. First things first, the dart frogs won't be going in here for another little while, uh, as I don't actually have a top for it, so I'm just going to set it up and actually put it over there. That's where it's just going to run for a little while, just to make sure everything's growing well and everything's happy. After that we can transfer the frogs into the tank. I'm waiting for glass and then I'll have to get some mesh and stuff to create a custom top. First we're going to start off with the substrate and the substrate is actually bought from Jungle Jewel Exotics. Don't know exactly what's in here, um, I'm not even going to try and guess, but that is at the substrate level, that's what we're going to be using for both the very bottom of the tank as well as in the two planters and in the very back back there. Now this substrate apparently I've heard is supposed to not go anaerobic or for those of you that are maybe a little younger you might not know what that means and that basically just means that no oxygen is getting down there so there's some bad bacteria building up. Anaerobic bacteria basically makes that smell of like sewer or uh, sulfur. It's, it's just a bad gross smell that nobody really wants to smell. So one way to combat that is actually adding some microorganisms to your substrate and these are in the form of brown isopods and springtails. Now I don't know you can see those guys climbing in and around. That was actually cucumber like a week ago so you can see they do do a really good job and there are a bunch in here so I'll be spreading it out between the two tanks. Technically I think you're supposed to use one of these for one tank but I'm gonna spread it out over two and then since I have two of these, I'll probably use two springtail cultures. And those are the springtails right there. Now this is why vivariums are self-sustaining, is because they have live ground. These guys will recycle any waste, any dead material, anything like that, and basically like compost it into the soil. So when I said earlier, some people were asking, oh, why do you never change the substrate in a dart frog tank? You would have to if you didn't have a vivarium set up. If you didn't have the live soil and everything like that. That's a situation that you would actually have to change the substrate. But considering that I'm adding all these plants, as well as the isopods and the springtails, that's what makes it so I don't have to. I've gotten that question a couple times, so that's why. Alright, so I'm going to turn this light on just because I'm blocking the backlight, so we do need some light in this tank. So I'm going to move this tank out of the way as well as the substrate, the substrate and additives, and I'll show you guys what plants I'll be using in the tank. Alright, so now that I've kind of shown you the cage and exactly what's in it, now we can start to get into the fun part and what plants we're going to be adding. First, before we get into anything, this is basically just cotton thread. Um, it's actually for aquariums, but it'll work perfectly for this. That'll be for attaching the orchid that I plan on putting in there to the actual driftwood itself so it doesn't fall off. Eventually it'll hold on itself. So I have all these plants to choose from. I could even put in more, all the ones up there and even some of the ones down there. But those all grow fairly large, so I'll save those for the big terrarium build and... I'll use some of the smaller ones that I have now. My thoughts are I'm going to be adding some of this guy right there, possibly some of this guy. These leaves are absolutely gnarly, like they're, they're like see-through, I don't know, it's really weird to explain, but they're really, really cool. This is called turtle fern or something like that, and I'll be adding some of that in the pots. But the main plants that I'm going to be adding are these. I'm going to cut this back a little bit just because some of the leaves aren't doing so hot. This is the Swiss cheese philodendron, I believe is the name, because they have those holes there, so it resembles Swiss cheese, I guess. I will be adding this coral berry plant. I will be adding one of the bromeliads. I'm thinking probably this one right here. If not, maybe this guy. I don't know. I'm going to try and squeeze in some bromeliads. This guy's pretty small, so I might add him somewhere too. Not really sure yet. Honestly, this is just going to be kind of design-as-you-go fashion. Like, I have all this moss 
and then all this moss as well. I'm probably gonna add this stuff first just because this takes up more convenient space for growing stuff than this does. This tub just sits on top of Sheldon's pen over there, whereas this actually sits on growing space over there. That's all I have to really say about the plants that I'm going to be adding. Uh, one more thing to add to the substrate component will be some oak leaves. Now these are really, really big. I'll probably be using some of the smaller ones in here. And uh, that's, the oak leaves are really good for just uh, ground cover. From here on out, I am going to hook you guys up to the tripod. I'm gonna get the workspace set up and I'm just gonna start going. Hopefully it turns out well and I'll come back at the end of the video to show you where everything is, how everything turned out. All right, so a few moments later, we've came in. I planted there, there. I filled in the bottom, as well as put some soil behind the light there. The reason why I plant, I put that soil in the back there is so I can maybe grow something small back there. I'm not sure exactly what, but hopefully something will grow. We're back now. I planted that back there. I actually anchored it down with some rocks, just because it was bending in a way that I don't want it to. And the roots actually go all the way down to the bottom down here. It will have plenty of room to grow and will probably get very huge. So chances are in the future I will be cutting back this philodendron quite a lot just because of how big it'll probably get and it might even get burned by the light because it's so close but I'm going to give it a shot there. Alrighty, so as you can see there, I have the orchid in there, and it doesn't look like I'm going to need to use any of the cotton string. Eventually in the future I might have to, but as of right now, it looks good. The next clip you guys are going to see is going to be when the tank is completely done and planted and just running, and then I'll do a big broad overview so you guys don't have to waste your time watching me plant the viv, you guys can just see the very end product. And we're back. For the most part, this is pretty close to done. So I'm just planning to pick up a little bit more moss for this tank. Um, I'm hoping to kind of... I'm going to see how the moss in here is going to grow, simply because I honestly don't know. Uh, this was found outside, and it was in like some like silty mix. So this is an overview of the tank. I ended up taking out the orchid, and I actually have three bromeliads in there. The light is really bright, so it's hard to see exactly the colors. There we go. So I've got three bromeliads in there. I have the crypt, that little pink dude up top there. There's a piece of creeping fig over there. There's also one down in this corner right here, then the Swiss cheese plant at the back. This tank was actually a lot more challenging than I thought it was going to be. Um, I thought I had a lot more room for plants and things. Turns out I didn't, so I might throw in a couple more things here and there. Oh, and down there is actually this guy right here. I just cut off a couple leaves to see if he'll grow right down there, and hopefully eventually I can just keep bringing it back and re-putting and have a little mat going here. That's the goal at least. Other than that, I really didn't put all that many plants in there to be honest. I thought it was going to be so much more lush, but I think this looks good. Um, the balance of bromeliads and some of the other plants, like this plant will get a little bit taller and then I'll probably just keep cutting it back right before this bromeliad. Hopefully this log completely covers in moss. There's also a little tiny piece, I don't know if you can see it, it's like right here. So I'm hoping that'll start to grow as well. And then I'm hoping that this creeping fig here actually kind of makes a wall out of itself, which would be really, really cool. But other than that, there's not a whole lot to say. I can get you a little bit closer again. Everything's looking really good. Uh, that light is super, super bright, so I'm hoping that it brings out some really nice colors in the bromeliads. As you can already see, they already have a ton of color, so I'm just hoping that just pops and 
makes them look awesome. That's all I'm going to say for now. I actually haven't added in any of the isopods or springtails quite yet. I'm going to let the tank settle for a little while before I add those. I don't want to add them in too early because then the substrate might not be moist enough or something like that and they might die. So I really don't want that. Anyways, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as a last treat, I'm going to turn on the waterfall for the first time since I planted the tank. And you guys will get to see how that goes. Whether it's positive or negative, you will see it. So let's do that. Looks like it's working really well. So I might switch up that pump because it is adding quite a bit of force. And I was wondering if you guys had any suggestions to reduce the splash marks. Um, because I really don't want... A ton of splash so maybe that'll just come with a little less flow or I'll just have to deal with it or maybe I ramp it with something like a piece of cork bark or whatever so that about sums it up I got the tank done I really hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did in fact like it drop a like down below while you're down there leave any comments questions concerns anything you might have to ask me I'll be sure to answer if you want to see more frog shrimp or reptile related videos subscribe to my channel Graphic Phoenix, out of here.